In today's video, I want to talk about my brother and I's experience in learning how to sail. I'll start off with why we got into sailing in the first place and then talk a little bit about our experience. Now, growing up in Colorado, we don't have a lot of water to sail on, but we do have a few lakes, one of them specifically Lake Dillon. Growing up, I remember driving by it on our way to Breckenridge quite frequently, and I always thought it would be fun to be out there sailing on the water. For a long time, it was just a dream. But a couple of years ago, my brother and I started talking about the possibility of taking lessons. After doing a fair amount of research, trying to find a place that was somewhat close to Colorado Springs, we stumbled upon the Victoria Sailing School out of Denver, Colorado. It is Colorado's oldest sailing school, and so far we've had a blast learning from them. So we signed up for the ASA 101 course, which is essentially the introductory course, learning all the terms of the boat and getting a few practicals on the water. So the registration process was pretty easy. Once you sign up and pay for your first class, you'll be able to access the portal and sign up for your theories, your practical, and your exams. For ASA 101, we had two theory classes, a theory one, as well as a know your knots class, the Theory 101 we took online. They have a bunch of videos and a practice test at the end to test your skills. And the Know Your Knots class, we drove up to Denver to visit their office. A funny thing to note about the office, it's right next to a tough shed building. And at first glance, we thought it was an apartment building. But there are actually no apartments in the building itself. It's all office space. Not sure if it was residential before and then became commercial. Most likely, but whatever the case, they haven't made it super clear. So just know that if it looks like a residential, but you're next to the tough shed building as well as the extra space building, you're probably near the right area. So while we did take our Theory 101 class online, you could also take the option of taking it at the office itself. To get to where all the trainings go at the office, you just walk in either the front doors or the back doors of the executive building and go downstairs and you'll find the Victoria Sailing School. For the Know Your Knots class, we were in one of the conference rooms and then for our exam, we were in the adjacent conference room. Once we finished up Theory 101 as well as Know Your Knots, it was time to head out on the water. We did three practicals, each three hours in length. The first was on a weekday morning. We didn't have a ton of wind that first day, but it was nice to have a very calm weather to learn the ropes, so to speak. We got the chance to practice anchoring, as well as docking and raising the sails. The next day on the water, we took another morning course, but this time the weather was a little stormier. Hi everyone, welcome to day two of practical sessions for the sailing school. We're out at the dock again. Getting here is pretty easy. We came on Titan Road, coming from the south, heading westbound. Uh, turned right on that first roundabout, but it's pretty simple. Just follow Chatfield State Park Road. All the way through, you'll get to a guard tower where they sell the park passes. And we're on the practicals again. All of the practicals are on one of the reservoirs. Uh, one of those reservoirs is Chatfield Reservoir, where we did all three of our practicals. We, again, practiced some more docking and then went out on the open water to go sailing. And we got the chance to raise our sails. I mentioned earlier, it was a bit stormy. Well, that storm cloud came over fast, and within minutes, we were drenched in rain. We were in the midst of an absolute downpour. Thankfully, there was no lightning, otherwise we wouldn't have been on the water. And what was great about our second day is that we got to experience the wind. We practiced reefing our sails and sailing under heavy storm winds, which was a lot of fun. It was also very cold, so word to the wise, come prepared for any sort of weather when you're out on a boat. Our last practical, again at Chatfield, was in the afternoon. Sort of like the second day, there were storm clouds around the lake, so we started with docking again and kind of kept an eye on the weather to make sure that the lightning wasn't coming any closer. At a certain point, we determined that the storm was staying away from the lake and we figured it would be safe to go out onto the open water. We motored out to the lake, hoisted our main sail, and got the chance to sail around the lake a little bit. The day started out with a mild wind. It was enough to sail, but it wasn't overpowering. 
Then to our surprise, a large gust of wind came out of nowhere. It took off my hat and threw it into the lake. We used that opportunity as a chance to practice a man overboard drill, but amongst the increasingly heavier and heavier wind, my hat eventually sunk before we were able to get to it. Well, as a good third sail, you maybe notice I'm missing something. I was pretty bummed about my hat, but I didn't have a lot of time to really think it over because within a few minutes of the hat disappearing, another gust of wind came over and we started seeing white caps on the lake. Waves started crashing over the bow, spraying water into our face. We tried lowering the mainsail, and the way that you would lower a mainsail is to turn your motor on, face the bow of the ship into the wind, and then lower your mainsail. Well, we tried that, but our engine was just a little too weak to get us head on into the wind. I was at the helm at the time, and it was a fight just to get us a little bit off directly into the wind. It was a wild experience, but I will make a quick note before we got into that whole mess. We were really sailing at a very fast clip, and that was a lot of fun. The third day was really special because we got to experience the rush of sailing really fast across the lake. But anyway, we had difficulty lowering the sails. Eventually, our instructor took over the helm, and we did our best to bring in the sails and try and motor out of the storm that was. Again, the motor was so weak that not only could we not head it directly into the wind, but we struggled getting back into dock. But we all made it in alive, nobody got thrown overboard, and we had a great time. After our practicals, we went back to the office for our exam. The exam is not a required part of taking the course, but if you'd like to get certified in ASA 101, 103, and so on, you have to take the exam. And the exam and those certifications that come through the exam will allow you to be able to eventually charter boats down the road. I think in the U.S., in landlocked states, you need a 103 certification to charter a boat. And along the coastal waters, you need a 104 or above. In any case, we took our test. It took a couple hours to finish, but it was pretty straightforward. As long as you know the material and you've been paying attention through the practicals and through the in-class portions, you'll do great on the exam. And now we're looking at what class to take next, possibly 103. In any case, that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe down below. And I will see you in the next video. Oh,